So are we entering the era of hothouse earth? To talk about that now, I'm joined by Claire Fison. She's a researcher from Climate Analytics, an organization that supports what they call science-based policy to prevent dangerous climate change. Welcome to the show. Um, it has been a savage summer uh, here in Europe, elsewhere as well, um, Australia, the United States. What, what's behind this extreme heat wave? Well, if you needed persuading that climate change is going to influence us all, that it is already influencing, influencing us all, then I think this heat wave provides an excellent example. As you said, it's, it's hit across the globe, in particular the northern hemisphere. We've seen high temperatures in Sweden, forest fires in Greece and Portugal. And it's not just the high temperatures that are an issue, it's also a lack of rain. So Germany has seen 30% less mm. rain than it would have done um, in the same months last century. So it's really a double whammy for people and for farmers. Now, it's not rocket science that such high temperatures are linked to climate change. A warmer climate will lead to higher temperatures. There's also an impact from climate change on atmospheric circulation patterns. So in the Northern Hemisphere, the jet stream is influenced by the temperature gradient across the world. And changes in this jet stream's activity can lead to prolonged climate events such as this heat wave and drought. And 2018 is an excellent example of that. OK, you mentioned this double whammy. I think that's a good way to de describe it. And, and our report uh, uh, cited earlier this international study uh, that uh, a hothouse period is upon us. Did you see us headed into, are we headed into a protracted period of drought and extreme temperatures? So we're not yet in this hot house period. We still have time to prevent that. And really what this study is doing, it's a call to arms to say, let's keep to the Paris Agreement temperature limit of 1.5 degrees, which keeps us out of the risk of shifting into um, a hot house type climate. Um, as it stands, the policies that we put in place take us to about three and a half degrees of warming. And that's also something that we do not want to get near. Mm -hmm. We really need to stay below, uh, well below two degrees, keep it to 1.5. OK. Um, the scientists writing about hothouse earth, uh, the trend there, said, quote, that this trend would, quote, be propelled by strong biogeophysical feedbacks difficult to influence by human action. Does that mean we could reach a trigger point where if not enough is done and temperatures continue increasing, that there's no way back? Um, the scientists are talking about tipping points in the climate system, which are very complex parts of the climate system, such as ice sheets, the rainforest, ocean circulation. And it's thought that if these reach a certain, if we reach a certain temperature level, we could see very rapid and, and some, sometimes irreversible changes in these systems. Uh, now, we're not yet at the temperature where that would happen. Mm. We cannot really pinpoint a number where the risk of these events happening lies. Um, the science is not ready to do that. But what the science can tell us is that if we limit temperature-wise to 1.5 degrees, we stay out of that very high-risk zone. OK, what does your research show, uh, briefly, if you could? Are we going to stay within that 1.5 degree range? Or, or is it as dangerous as this new international study showing? There are certainly ways to keep below the 1.5 degree limit. Um, uh, Experts have shown a m multiple different pathways through which we can keep our emissions down. We need to act rapidly, though, so we need to reduce our emissions by about half in the next decade in order to keep to that 1.5 degree limit. But yes, it's certainly possible. Claire Fison from Climate Analytics, thanks so much for being with us this morning, Claire. Thank you.